you should have the option to go remote because last time I checked, being involuntarily tied to a physical location is called prison. And society has brainwashed us now into thinking this is normal, but it isn't. Like being stuck in an office, chained to a desk, staring at a laptop screen, none of these things are human. And a few years ago, this was me. I was miserable, pretty lonely, and feeling trapped. And now I work anywhere I want in the world. I manage my own schedule and I provide real value and I'm compensated accordingly for that. And the only thing that changed was that I went remote. And this has changed my life in ways that like, I won't even get into in this video. But now I really feel some sort of obligation to help other people achieve the same thing. Because like, making people happier just sounds like a pretty worthwhile thing to do. So here is my mission. By 2025, make at least 1,000 people go remote. You heard it here first. Before I go into the seven steps, I also just want to apologize because I had, I probably had about four messages this week from people who said they didn't understand last week's video or newsletter and they weren't sure of like what the actionable next steps were. And uh, you pay me with your most valuable asset, your attention. So I guess it's my duty to break things down as simply as possible. So that's what I'm gonna try and do in this video. So with that being said, here is my seven step system that will get pretty much anybody going remote without having to set up some fancy business within about 12 weeks. Step one, identify your skill. So in 2024, almost all skills can be monetized remotely. I know of a woman in Dubai who's making like 16,000 USD per month uh, teaching knitting. And I can hear you now, but, but I don't have any skills, yes. You do have skills. What have you studied? Where have you worked? What are your passions? What are your interests? What are your unfair advantages? What do you enjoy doing that most people hate? Sit down, think about this, get creative. Don't be lazy. This, like, this is really, really important. This is foundational. I can hear you again, but, but I still don't know what to do. Okay, pick one of the following and go all in on learning this skill over the next four to eight weeks. Copywriting, social media management, remote sales or AI automation. Step two, this is the hungry market test. So maybe remote sales is your skill of choice. Go to LinkedIn, go to the job section, search sales or BD, which companies are looking for salespeople? What are they trying to sell? Could you sell this? Now remember, you have no idea how an iPhone works, but chances are you could probably sell an iPhone. So if companies want salespeople, which they do, by the way, there is a hungry market for your skill. But maybe you'd rather teach knitting like our friend in Dubai. In which case, go to Reddit, search for communities, scroll through all the posts, read them, go on Instagram, see what people are commenting. What are people frustrated with? Is there a gap between where they are and where they want to be? Could you address this problem with your services? If the answer is yes, there is a hungry market for your skill. Where there is pain, there is a hungry market and you can fix that pain with your skill. Step three, the proposal. Now pay attention here because this is where 99% of people go wrong. Person A, I will edit your videos for $3,000 per month. That's probably not gonna cut it in 2024. Person B, using your raw footage, I will edit one short form clip per day, generating at least 5,000 views within the first 24 hours for $3,000 a month or your money back. My money is on person B. He was very clear about the amount of effort required on my part, my desired outcome, time frame expectations, and most importantly, he reversed all the risk by offering a money back guarantee, which isn't always necessary, but it's a very, very, very effective tool when you have no case studies or no testimonials to support your proposal. Number four is outreach. So you have your skill, you know there's a hungry market and you're armed with your proposal, but who do you reach out to and how do you reach out to them? So let's take our remote salesman who used LinkedIn to identify the hungry market in step two. Who posted this job? Who is the talent manager on the company profile page? While you're on the company profile page, are there any senior sales managers or sales directors that we could reach out to? Now we use the cold approach method and DMs are fine, but email is better. The principles are the same for both. Number one, if it's an email, include a captivating subject line with their name in the subject line. Number two, have a personalized opening line in the message, ideally with a compliment. Number three, 
demonstrate some sort of credibility as, as quickly as possible? What kind of achievements, testimonials, uh, case studies do you have? Number four, your proposal. We already mentioned that in step three. Um, make this, summarize this in one line, be super to the point. And number five, finish the message with a call to action. My favorite one is, can I send you some more information about this? The objective here is to get a response. That's it, like we're not trying to close anybody, we're not trying to do anything more than just get a response. Number five, closing. So we're gonna arrange a video call with the client or the prospect, and ideally we're gonna have a pretty good quality microphone and camera, both of which are the digital equivalent of dressing well in the workplace. And on this call, you're going to ask questions. You're gonna ask a lot of questions. What are their specific goals? Be hyper-specific here. What has worked? What hasn't worked? What are their time frame expectations? What's frustrating them? What are they worried about? Take note of all these things and address every single one of them in their proposal. There should be no step unclear in terms of how you're going to get them from where they are now to where they wanna be. If they're not ready to make a decision on that call, then you should at least have another follow-up call penciled in the diary until a decision is made. Number six, retention. So congratulations, you've got your first client. Now, how do you keep them? Well, in a word, information. Now this is gonna vary depending on what kind of service you offer and who your client is, but the key point here is just communicate with them often. Weekly calls, weekly reports. The main point is that your client needs to like you, they need to feel safe, and they need to know exactly what's going on at all times. By the way, pro tip, send your client a gift immediately after closing them, like a small gift, bottle of wine, box of chocolates, whatever it is, it's a gesture, um, and it can go a really, really long way. Probably one of the highest ROI things you could possibly do. Step seven, scaling. So well done, you've reached the final stage. Now, if you really wanna earn, you repeat all of the above steps for multiple clients. Now I can hear you, how will I find time to possibly do this? Well, you don't. You create standard operating procedures, you outsource, and you make use of automation tools. But chances are, that's further down the line for you. Let's walk before we can run. And I just hope this video made you take some sort of action today. That's all. Peace.